Hey everyone! Uh, my name is Elizabeth, this is Frizzy Lizzy Stitches, and today is April the 17th, 2022. Um, happy Easter to everybody who celebrates. And this is floss tube number 21. <laughs> Good job, Piper. <laughs> um, hi, everyone. So it's been four weeks since my last video, and um, I'm pretty sure in my last update I mentioned something about how I would see you in two weeks, not three weeks, not four, two. And here I am, four weeks later. So anyway, um, needless to say, on that part of it, I think I am going to switch to doing um, monthly updates as opposed to uh, bi-weekly updates. Um, that's just kind of how my life is feeling right now. But yeah, I'm going to quit lying to myself and just admit that I can only do this once a month <laughs> until the foreseeable future. So that's number one. Um, but in the past, what, what I have been up to in the past month, um, I actually got to go to my old college town where my sister is actually going to the same college and got to visit her for for her sorority's parent weekend. And um, yes, I'm not her parent, <laughs> but they did open it to siblings this year. So um, I was excited to be able to go and see her. And so my dad was out of town for military stuff. So it was just me, my sister and my mom, and we had a great time. And yeah, so I kind of, that was the first weekend. And then the other two weekends, um, I kind of just took it as a chance to relax and not worry about doing anything that didn't need to be done. And I got a lot of stitching done. Um, so much stitching that I have finished for you today. And yeah, so I have um, a few things to talk about today. Um, Granted, I only have one cross stitch project, but I have lots of other stitchy things to talk about. So, um, I have one whip, which turned into a finish. And then I also have a um, sewing project that I started and finished that I am going to show you today. And then I have some cross stitch haul. Um, I actually have some big Caterpillar cross stitch um, news to share with you. And then talking about their new sale that starts in May. And then I also have some bullet journal things that I wanted to talk about, but I'm going to save that for the very end. So if you're not interested in bullet journal, then you can just, I'll tell you when I'm done talking about stitchy stuff. So let's see. Yeah, I think that, oh, and I did want to uh, announce or re-announce. I think I already told you guys, but I am going to StitchCon Weekend B and it's coming up like right around the corner. It's about two months away. Um, so I ordered my, uh, stitch con sweatshirt, um, earlier. I think the last day to order it was like two days ago for the first round. So, um, hopefully that'll ship and get delivered to me before I move at the end of May. So, but yeah, so I'm going to stitch con weekend B and then, um, so <laughs> I kind of like randomly signed up for Stitch North. <laughs> um, I had heard Kathleen from Situation Normal and Shiloh from X Stitch MD talk about how much fun they had when they went, I guess, maybe a week or two ago now. And they, I have already opened up um, registration for next year. And um, Liz from Elizabeth Ann Can Stitch had posted on her Instagram story that she had signed up for the April weekend. And then I was like, <gasps> I kind of really want to go. So anyway, I chatted with Liz and then I was like, you know what? I'm just going to do it. <laughs> so I signed up for the April weekend of Stitch North. So I'm really excited about that. Um, but yeah, so that's about it for now. Um, as far as like updates go, I suppose. But I'm actually going to jump into the Caterpillar cross stitch stuff first um, before I talk about stitching and haul. So I am a an ambassador, a brand ambassador for Caterpillar cross stitch, and I have um, been sent the Touch of Magic kit for their new stitch along, which starts um, Mar May the 26th. I think it's a Monday. Um, but it's Halloween themed, and if you're um, if you know anything about Caterpillar cross stitch or have seen their previous um, stitch alongs, 
Um, this is very similar to the Deck the Halls stitch along that they did maybe a couple of years ago um, where it was basically like a Christmas wordplay situation and this is kind of the same thing but Halloween themed. So anyway, I have a kit here to show you and I'm super excited to do this stitch along. But um, just for reference, um, Caterpillar Cross Stitch is in the UK and Sally sent this to me on April the 6th and I got it on the 15th so it was just over a week um to get here so not bad at all and um the pre the pre-orders to get your kit opened on the 7th so you and like i said the stitch along actually starts on may the 26th so you have plenty of time um to order now um and get your kit in time to start when the pattern releases so anyway enough <laughs> talk for that oh talk more about uh, ordering stuff after I show you what it is <laughs> but uh, here's the kit um, everything all the information about like how big it is and what you get in your kit is listed on the front here as well as like a blurred out image of kind of what the whole pattern is going to look like um, this is called touch of magic and like I said it's Halloween themed and is kind of like a wordplay like the deck the halls one um the stitch count is 111 by 200 stitches and i believe the patterns um since the mystery will come out every two weeks starting on may the 26th and i think there's six different pattern releases so i failed to write that part down but <laughs> um also so in the kit you get um, your fabric and you get um, floss so mind the uh, crinkles for a second here okay that wasn't so bad so here are the floss colors that um, are going to be used for this stitch along uh, super vibrant and halloweeny and she's got them on these really cool um, floss cards that are kind of like a bobbin um, floss tag hybrid. Um, so you can cut off however much floss you need and then whatever is left you can uh, thread through the little hole on the side. And yeah, so, and we got lots of white here. Like 13 and 14 I think are both white. So, <laughs> and then the fabric, it, um, there's three different options. Um, there's 14 and 16 count Ada, and then what I picked out was the 32 count even weave. And this is um, Zweigart fabric, and it's kind of like a blue-gray um, color. It kind of matches my bedspread, actually. Like, almost the same color. And then she also includes a needle. So the, literally the only thing you would need um, for this is a pair of scissors and a hoop or a Q-snap if you stitch with those things so yeah and then the paper that she's got in here is just some instructions on how to cross stitch and then also um, the key for the symbols and how they go with the colors so what I usually like to do is um, I will draw these symbols on the floss card so I don't even have to look at the key when I'm stitching it'll it's just already with the color that it's supposed to be so yeah and then the best thing about Caterpillar Cross Stitch projects, stitch alongs, is matching needle minders. And I have not looked at this yet, um, so I'm really excited. But this is the uh, needle minder that goes with this project. Uh, it's a little black cat, and I'm pretty sure that based on her Instagram, they have decided to name this cat Luna. But um, anyway, she's just in this little cardboard case. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. So cute. I'm so excited. The needle minders are like the most exciting part about these stitch alongs because they match the project that you're stitching and um, there's a, going to be a black cat in this pattern as well. So you always like end up stitching whatever's on your needle minder and they're just super high quality and so pretty. Oh, I'm so excited. <laughs> so if you want to do this stitch along with me, um, all you have to do is get your own kit, obviously. Or if 
you don't if you want to stitch from your stash you can just buy the PDF um, but I have a code for you if you want to buy a kit um, and that includes you can add on the needle minder as well and the code will work for that too but the code is Fri frizzy magic 10 I'll put that on the screen here and um, like I said it works on a full kit and needle minder and I have been I've been saying May 26 this whole time but it's actually May the 23rd so yeah and then also if you stitch this um, please you can use the hashtag, hashtag touch of magic Sal and then you can also tag um, Sally at Caterpillar Cross Stitch and you can even tag me at Frizzy Lizzy Stitches so yeah and I think that might be all the information you need I also have an affiliate link and I'll put some information below about where you can find the um, the pattern and the uh, kit so I think that might be all that I needed to share with you so yes I'm super excited these colors are beautiful the fabric choice is really fun and the pattern is gonna be super cute so here it all is one last time but yeah so definitely let me know if you're gonna stitch this with me because I'm really excited and I'm definitely gonna keep up with this one <laughs> so okay that's all my caterpillar cross stitch news for today um, next thing uh, we can get into my project that I finished so um, I only worked on one thing this past month and that was my garden party by Satsuma Street um, I'm not gonna show you what it's supposed to look like cause it's finished but I will show you what it looked like last time I showed it to you and uh, you might notice that Piper is messing with something over there. <laughs> um, you might notice that I still had a bunch of the tiny little one over one sun to rip out, and I'm happy to announce that I got that all ripped out uh, before I finished everything. And here it is! So I'm so excited about this. It's always so rewarding to finish something. Um, I started this last May and then I finished it literally yesterday. Um, it's stitched on 25 count vintage country mocha even weave and I think I need to keep Piper from eating something. Give me just a moment. Okay, I'm back. <laughs> Um, Piper always finds stuff that I have no, like, would never have thought she would have been interested in until I'm, like, trying to do something. So, anyway, but this is my finish. <laughs> um, I think I just told you the fabric. Um, it's patterned by Satsuma Street. She has two colorways for this. I chose the warm one. And, yeah, so I, I'm just gonna kind of zoom in and try to show you some of my favorite parts. Um, first is that little purple mushroom right there and then obviously the sun is really awesome and I love um, the little ladybug and then I also snuck my initials and my in the year that I stitched it in here so I put my initials right there um, in the like above the back of that bird and then I stuck the year right there above the wing of this bird so and I think it looked looks pretty good because Overall, it's not like, I mean, you can clearly see it, but it's not like in your face and it doesn't distract from what's going on. So, yeah. Um, I was torn about how I was going to finish this, but um, I think I might actually finish it as a pillow. Um, I've never done that before, but that's kind of like, she includes instructions on how to finish it that way. And at first I was like, I don't really want to do that because what, what am I going to do with a pillow that big? <laughs> but I just think it would look so cute. So I don't know. And I kind of want to do something different than just sticking it in a frame because that's pretty much the only finishing um, that I've ever done. So I think it would be cool to try something new. But yeah. Um, I took some really good pictures of this um, to post um, but haven't posted them yet because I wanted to show you guys in my video. So, I just love that purple mushroom. And the hummingbird. There's just so much cool stuff in here that you don't really realize is there until you stitch it. <laughs> so, okay. So yeah, that's my finish. And then, um, 
another thing I did uh, this past month was make a project bag, which also um, I put a project in here that I'm hoping to work on next. So this is the project bag I made. Um, this is the Curiouser and Curiouser fabric line from Tula Pink. Um, and so these are supposed to be the Cheshire Cats, but they look very much like Galaxy Cats, <laughs> which I really like. And that's also what I did on the back here. And then the top um, is kind of supposed to be the part in Alice in Wonderland where she like goes through the door and like she's, you know, swimming in her tears basically and then floods all the little animals. But that's also the inside part of the fabric. And I feel like the zipper is like the perfect color to match with the cats and some of the green that shows up in this fabric too. And then for the zipper pull, I just um, took some leftover um, fabric from when I squared up my uh, quarter yard or half yard um, to use as a zipper pull just to add something here so it wasn't just a plain zipper. So yeah, and um, since this is Alice in Wonderland themed fabric, I decided to put my Alice in Wonderland project in here. So just to show you what it looks like right now, this is what it looks like. And I have added, you know, an Alice in Wonderland needle minder too. So it's all themed up. <laughs> but I think I am going to pull this out next and finish this block right here, which is the tea party block, and then probably stitch out these threads that I've got hanging around here, so, for the border. But I think that'll be a good, um, t uh, I guess, project to work on, excuse me, um, for the next couple weeks, so, but yeah. And I'm excited that it's in, uh, like, a project bag that's not one of those Amazon bags and it's like the same theme and it's just very satisfying. <laughs> and then I also, when I pulled this out to move this project into this bag, I decided to switch my um, floss from bobbins to thread drops. So all my floss is very kinky <laughs> from being folded up on the bobbins, but um, these are the thread chips from Adam Hart Cross Stitch, and I think this was like called Blue Lagoon or or something tropical named, but anyway, I like how they all fit on here. There's like 26 colors, and the, um, she sells them in packs of 25, so I ended up having to put one of them on the other type of bobbin that I bought from her, which are the, the thread bobbin, um, ones and you definitely can fit more than one skein of floss on these because like this white one is like one and a half skeins and then there's a black one in here that's kind of the same thing so but yeah so I switched it all to the thread drops and if it's in the bag great so um, I'm excited to pull that back out um, yeah okay let's see and as all, as usual, I used the tutorial from Elizabeth Ann Stitch on how to make my project bag. Um, so it's a great tutorial and she did a really good job putting that together. So I actually um, wrote in my notebook here like a cheat sheet for like the measurements. So I don't even have to like, I pretty much just pull up her video to remind myself like how, like where to sew and like how to line up, um, like how to make your stack uh, so your all, all your fabrics are facing the right way and stuff. But yeah, anyway, so I'm very excited about this. <laughs> okay, um, let's see. So those were all the projects that I worked on. Um, and just for reference, I had like half of the uh, Satsuma Street one done my garden party and so I basically did all this side and that was about 18 hours worth of stitching over the past four weeks so um, pretty fun uh, it's cool to see like how long it actually takes to do stuff so um, I think I had I don't think I've been tracking this project on the toggle app that I use 
um, for the entire lifetime of this project. But I think I had like, I don't know, 80 something hours already logged for this project. And there's no telling, I like I can't remember if, I, if that was the total amount of time I spent on this or just how much time I tracked it for like when I started using the app. So anyway, <laughs> um, but yeah. So I think we can move into haul now. Um, I basically have, well, I guess there's only one like monthly club thing, um, which I guess I'll do first. This is the Color and Cotton uh, Thread Club and I am in the three skein club and I think it's like all the all colors one, but these are the colors for April. Yeah. <laughs> um, but they're very like, I feel like they're very primitive and springy looking. So, but this is blue suede, gecko and sparrow. So, so pretty. I was like pulling out the rest of the, I've been in this club for, since July last year. And I have so many, so much, so much floss now <laughs> that I haven't used any of it. I guess I'm just, I'm very much still in the phase of like, I am going to use exactly what's kitted for this or what's called for in this project. And I haven't like branched out yet, but I'm hoping to try to branch out a little more um, which I'm kind of doing with um, this fabric that I bought from Fortnite Fabrics. So I got two colors, um, and they're both in plastic, but I'll take them out in a second. Uh, I got Cozy. These are from their Hibernal Harvest um, line, but this is Cozy Cave. And like I said, I'll take it out of the bag in a second. And then this one is called Pine Woods. But they're very good neutrals, and I had bought these um, with a project in mind. Excuse the crinkles. Okay, so this is Cozy Cave, and um, like I said, I had bought this with a certain project in mind, which I'll show you in a second. But um, it's very interesting to see like how different fabric looks in person versus um, like on the pictures that they take for their website. So, I don't, I can't really tell if this is washed out or not, but. I'm not sure I understand. Oh my goodness. Siri has been like trying to, she says it's very interesting to see like how different fabric looks in purses versus like in the pictures. <laughs> oh my goodness. Okay. Anyway, I don't even know what I said that triggered that, but yeah. So this is a cozy cave, which is what I'm going to end up using for the project that I had in mind. But it's definitely like very warm with like a gray splatter in there. How did this fold? Okay, like that. And then the other one is Pine Woods, which I will open really quick. Okay, and this one is definitely a lot more like yellow and green. Um, so here's this one. See, like when I hold them up now, they look the same, but like this one has more green and that other one has more gray, but like in person, this one looks a lot more yellow than the Cozy Cave. So, I mean, maybe if I hold them together, you can really tell. Yeah, see how much more yellow this looks? That's why I'm gonna go with this one, uh, because of just how what the floss colors are. But um, the project, that I have talking about is Reaping Love by Silver Creek Samplers. And so I'm gonna use this Cozy Cave. Oh, this is just too much glare. <laughs> I don't wanna take the whole thing out, just the cover image. Okay. So I'm gonna use Cozy Cave for this one. See, I, when I was picking out fabric, I was thinking this one would look good because of like the green right here and the grass, but I think this is just too yellow. So I think this one is gonna look a lot better with it. But um, that was kind of my thought process. Um, I wanted to start this back in February, but it took me a while to get this fabric. So 
I'm just gonna start it whenever I'm ready to start it. Um, I already have the floss. I just need to like get the floss ready for stitching because right now it's just like um, bundled up in here. It's still packaged like DMC does their stuff. So anyway, I'm hoping to start that soon. It probably won't be this month because there's only two weeks left in April and the last week I will be out of town and probably not going to bring any stitching with me because I want to read. Um, and plus books are just easier to pack and travel with than all the cross stitch stuff. Plus I don't really know what project I wanna work on and anyway. So this will probably be a start for next month. But yeah, anyway. Okay, so that is my stitchy haul. Um, so I think this is coming to an end for the stitchy stuff. Um, my plans for the next four weeks or month or whatever, I don't even know like what four weeks from now is. I mean, obviously it's mid-May, but um, there's gonna be a lot of stuff happening for me in the next like month and a half or so. So I'm going on a trip and then Bobby's gonna be graduating from med school and getting promoted in the Air Force and then we're gonna be moving. So we'll see what happens. Um, hopefully I'll be able to tag up with you guys in a month, but it might be a little longer than that simply because of all the moving and traveling and stuff. So anyway, my goal is to, or, oh, my leg is falling asleep. <laughs> Um, pause please. <laughs> okay, so my goal for the next month, or I guess between now and whenever I talk to you guys again, is to do the tea party block for Alice in Wonderland, and I would like to start reaping love. And then I also had this bright idea, <laughs> oh I didn't bring the project in here, but it doesn't matter. Um, for Sweetest Pie, there are 12 pies on that chart, so I was thinking like, oh, if I stitch one pie a month, then it'll be done by pie day next year. So, I mean, granted, I would also have to stitch some of the border and some of the other little motifs that are not pies, but um, that's very doable. So, and April is not over yet, so <laughs> I still have time to do my April pie. But, so I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm going to finish the tea party block, make a start on Reaping Love, stitch a pie, and then whatever else I feel like doing, I will do. <laughs> so, yeah. Um, but that is pretty much all the stitchy stuff. So, let's see. I always wanted to ask, like, ask a question at the end, but I, then I forgot to like plan a question. And so then I'm like, hmm, I don't know. <laughs> but, yeah, I don't know. Let me know if you're gonna do the Touch of Magic style. <laughs> um, yeah. And let's see, I think that's gonna be all the stitching for today. So um, you're more than welcome to stay if you want to hear about bullet journal things. Um, but that's about it. So yeah, thanks for joining me for the stitchy if you came this far. <laughs> and now we're gonna talk about bullet journaling. So um, I had totally filmed an April setup video. And then I went to go edit it, and I was like really kind of getting frustrated with the editing process because I had like, I don't know, there were some things that I did, I don't know if I filmed it weird because the setup was a lot better. Like everything was in the shot and it was well lit, whatever. But like there were times where like I thought I was gonna talk about something, so like I gestured toward things, but then like when it came time to do the voiceover, it was like complicated because there were some things that like I needed to do really fast, and then there were some things that I needed it to be really slow. So there was lots of like choppiness in like the speeds, and it honestly just kind of was a little nauseating, so like I kind of just rage quit, <laughs> and anyway. But I also still wanted to show like what I did in my April setup. So I thought I would just show you guys. And then since I'm halfway through the month, you can also get an idea of like how I f use it and how I fill it out. Um, but yeah, so that's kind of that. <laughs> um, how, so anyway, I did this cover page and I was like, um, not too in like, 
thrilled about it because when I made it, I was trying to like blend the yellow with the green and I kind of like peeled the paper a little bit and then it like bled through on the other side and then I like kind of just wrote April again on top of it to kind of cover up where I was really weirdly blended. <laughs> and so, oh, my ruler just fell. <laughs> um, so it, it doesn't look terrible, but it definitely, I was frustrated with it at the moment. So, but anyway, and then I moved on to um, doing my setup and I did like a fancy little like half page situation or like I think people call it a Dutch door. Um, but like this is where I like had to use my white pen to cover up where it had bled through. This is like really washing out because of the light. But anyway, I basically just did my calendar and um, I've got my water tracker down here you can kind of see so I just fill in a dot for every uh, cup of water that I drink and yeah I covered it in a bunch of like yellow teal and lime green stickers and then this is my how I'm tracking my habits this month um, so I've got vitamins scoop litter pill floss activity stitching reading and journaling and then I have my goals list on the side here which I have done three of four so go me <laughs> but yeah and then this is my uh, my to-do list that I I use the what do they call it rolling weekly I think is what they call it but basically you have a column for each day of the week and then you just write out all your tasks on the right and then you draw dots under which day you're gonna do that task on and then you draw when you've done the task you can draw a line to connect what day you did it on so and then on this page, I just have listed, I, I had all my cross stitch whips listed in my stitchy notebook, um, but I decided to write them down in my bullet journal so when I'm not with my stitchy book, I can see what's going on. <laughs> but and I got to write that I finished garden party, so. And then I've, I went ahead and um, set up my, I had, I was running out of page on that weekly, so I made another one, so. I pretty much just like to slap on some washi tape in the corners just to give the page some interest. <laughs> but yeah, um, so that's how my bullet journal turned out this month, or is turning out, we're like halfway through. Um, I really like the color scheme. Um, my um, kind of practice for picking a theme is to like just go through my washi collection and then like pick out tapes that look good together that maybe I don't use very often. And then I will like pick markers that match the washi tape. And then after I've like done all the important stuff and that's, I'm ready to add some stickers, I'll just pick stickers that match the colors. So, or like if it's, you know, if it feels springy, I'll try to pick springy stickers, you know. But that's the easiest way I find to make a theme because you don't have to worry about like sticking to, like you don't have to make up something and then try to stick to it. You can just work with what you have. So yeah. But that is my April pages. <laughs> and I also got my Pipsticks April stickers. So I'm not gonna show you all of them, but I do wanna show you my favorites. Um, they do come like in a bag like this. And it's all like sparkly and stuff. <laughs> um, but I am in the Pro Classic Club, and which comes with like, I think 15 sheets of stickers. So, like I said, I'm not going to show you all 15 sheets. I'm just going to show you my favorites. Um, but these are the um, artists. They always do like an artist collaborator um, sheet. And these are cal uh, calibration. <laughs> collaboration with Once Warm With Love, which I used to buy her stickers all the time. She makes, she draws these little munchkins. But these are all like self-care things. So, super cute. And then, let's see. This one just cracks me up because the picture of it, like, the hands are not webbed, but for some reason the stickers came out webbed, so <laughs> just makes me laugh. Um, but these are totally one of my favorites. They're just like little emotion stickers that are in different colors. My favorite is the little frowny face. I don't know if it'll focus, <laughs> but anyway. <laughs> and let's see. I also really like these little avocados. They're like doing self-care type things. And then, um, let's see. 
Oh yeah, this one right here. It's some goat yoga. So yeah, those are my favorites from this month. And they also include a postcard, and the postcard for this month is... Oh wait, no, I gotta show you this one. <laughs> this one's hilarious. Best day ever. It's a dumpster fire. <laughs> oh, I love it. It's so funny. Okay, yeah. And then they include a postcards. So it says, you're on fire. So, anyway, those are my stickers for this month, and I'm super excited about them. It's always fun to um, open your mail and, like, have fun stuff in there. Like, you know, sticker subscription or flosses or fabric or anything like that. So, yeah. Okay, well, let's see. I talked about all the things that I wrote down that I was going to talk about. Oh, well, I guess, no, I wasn't going to talk about that. I, I've been using this um, journal for uh, writing down, like, my floss tube notes. And I also use it to kind of track, like, what day I stitch things. So I just draw out a calendar and then I write down what I stitched on that day. And that helps me remember when I do my floss tube what I stitched in between uh, updates. So, um, but I've definitely, I've been using this since July and um, I've used like quite a bit of, I've used like that much already. So, yeah. I highly recommend having notebooks that are dedicated to things. Like in here, I also have a page, like I said earlier, about like I have all the like the measurements written down for the project bag so I can just cut my fabric out and then I can follow Liz's tutorial on how to piece it together but yeah anyway I'm also just a stationary addict so <laughs> any excuse I can have for a notebook is a great one so okay anyway that's all I'm going to talk about today um thanks for hanging out with me I will see you when I see you and Comment down below and let me know what you did, what you were working on while you watched this video. That'll be cool. I know a bunch of people are doing that now, and it's pretty fun. So, anyway. Okay, well, have a great week, great month, great everything, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye! Hey, Piper. Do you have the floss tube notes?